using the shell method. We want to verify the formula for the volume, the sphere of radius r, and the volume for a right circular cone. So for the sphere, it's 4 pi r cubed over 3. And for the right circular cone with height h and radius r, pi thirds h r squared. Let's first do the sphere. So what I do is I'm going to sketch my picture. So I'm going to sketch a circle. And notice here we're going to rotate that thing around the y-axis. And that's going to generate a bunch of these cylinders. So the sphere gets filled out by a bunch of cylinders. As I go across an X, that's going to pick out each of these cylinders. We'll be at one cylinder for each X. And we want to figure out what the area of that is. Once I have that area, we have a volume formula, which is just going to tell us as I integrate over all these cylinders. So I start at zero. That cylinder is actually just a degenerate segment going from R to minus R along the Y axis. So we're going to go from x equal to 0 all the way out to r over here. And then that'll be degenerate also. That cylinder is just going to be a circle. So what I need to do is I have to get a handle on the different heights and radii of all the cylinders that are going to be on the inside at a given point x. So the first thing I need to do is get a handle on the curves that determine the top and the bottom of my cylinder. So let's take a look. Well, we're looking at a circle of radius r here. And that, then we're going to rotate that, get a sphere. So I have x squared plus y squared equals r squared. I can push the x squared to the other side, then take the square root of both sides of the equation. That gives me two solutions. y equal to plus square root of r squared minus x squared and y equal to minus square root of r squared minus x squared. For the plus solution, positive y means above the x-axis, negative y means below the x-axis. So our two solutions are going to be this curve up here for the positive square root, this curve down here for the minus square root. So when I go over to here and look at, say, take this representative cylinder, I'm going to pull that out. This point here is on the curve, so that's going to represent square root of r squared minus x squared. The point at the bottom of the cylinder is going to be represented by minus r squared minus x squared square root. So if I put all this together, let's take a look at what it says for the cylinder. This top point's the positive square root. This bottom point is the minus square root. So the height which is going to be the distance tra traveled between the two. It's going to be 2 times square root of r squared minus x squared. That's going to be the height of the cylinder. For the radius, just note the radius is just going to be our x. That's how far we go out to pull our cylinder out. So we have radius x, height, 2 square root of r squared minus x squared. The area of the cylinder is just given by 2 pi r, the circumference of the circle at the base, times the height. So that's going to give me 2 pi x times 2 square root of r squared minus x squared. Now I can go ahead and get a volume. We plug everything into our volume equation. This is the area of the cylinder at x. Our limits are going to go from 0 to r. Okay, pretty clearly here we have a composition, so I'm going to target the inside. u equals r squared minus x squared, du equals minus 2x dx, and then dx equals du over minus 2x. I substitute. We'll notice the minus 2x from the dx substitution. It's going to let me cancel out the x's, and I wind up with minus 2 pi u to the 1 half du. This is all in u, so I can put the u limits in. If I put in r into r squared minus x squared, I get 0. If I put 0 into r squared minus x squared, I get r squared. So I can get rid of the minus sign by flipping the order of integration. 
u to the one half, we know how to take its antiderivative. We add one and flip it over. So that gives me three halves as my new exponent. And then flip that over gives me a two thirds in front. We're evaluating from zero to r squared. Okay, collect everything in front, that gives me four pi. And then I have r squared raised to the three halves. The rule here would be, you just multiply the exponents together. So I wind up with an r cubed, and then I get my four pi r cubed over three. Now let's look at the right circular cone. So we have the radius of the base is r, so that's going to be from there to there. The height is going to be h, which goes from there to there. So first, I don't need to know what the curve is or the line that's going along guiding the bottom part. Well, if you notice, it's a straight line. It's going through the origin. So all I need to know is what's the slope. Slope is rise over run, which is h over r. So we're looking at the line y equals h over rx. We're going to rotate that line around the y-axis. And I'm going to, at the point x, I'm going to pull out the representative cylinder. So we pull it out and put it over here. Let's notice a few things. First off, the radius of the cylinder, since I'm pulling it out at x, is going to be x. To get the height, let's do a little bit of gymnastics. So to go from top to bottom of the cone is to give me the height h. If I go from the lower part to the x-axis, that's just going to be the value at the function y equals h at r over x at x. So that's going to be h r over x. So my height is going to be what's left over to get the h, which is just going to be h minus h r over r times x. So that's going to be the height of this cylinder here. I have its radius. I have its height. I can get its area. Its area is going to be 2 pi radius times height. So the radius of that cylinder is x. The height of this cylinder is h minus h r times x. Okay, if you notice, I can factor the h out, and I'll put the x in. This will just be more convenient for when I integrate. Moving to the volume formula, we're just going to integrate from 0 to r of the area of the cylinders. We go from 0 to r because notice our radii are going to go from 0 here, which is the degenerate piece of the y-axis going from 0 to h. And then it's going to have radii going all the way out till I hit r. And that's just going to be degenerate again. That's just going to be the circle that goes around the top. I stick in my area function, 2 pi h, x minus 1 over r, x squared. The 2 pi h, that's all constant, so I can bring that out in front, leaving me with x minus x squared over r. This, we know how to do the antiderivative of. Just add 1 and flip it over. The exponent here is a 1, so I get 1 half x squared. I add 1 to that, gives me a cube. Flip over the 3, I get x cubed over 3r. Now all I have to do is stick in r and 0, take the difference. 0 in here gives me 0, so I'm just sticking r in, which is going to leave me with 2 pi h, 1 half r squared, minus 1 third r cubed over r. r cubed over r is just r squared, so I'm looking at a half minus a third times r squared. That's going to be 1 sixth, so we're looking at 2 pi h, r squared over 6, and then that turns into the promised pi h r squared divided by 3.